what is going on everybody back at it again with another YouTube video and today we're gonna be talking Sixers basketball yet again I've been you know I've been really trying to get out the daily videos for you guys every day to put out content to put out Sixers content because you look around YouTube there's not that many Sixers content creators so me and a couple of the guys yesterday Steven Conrad jr. Philly take what RB and the Philly Talk podcast did a live stream of four man roundtable talking about Sixers. If you haven't already, go check out all four of our channels. The links will be in the description. And go check out yesterday's live stream. This will be at the end of this video today. You know, I love the Sixers. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before I get into that, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We are almost at 580 subscribers. We are one more away from that 580 mark. We are 21 subscribers away from 100. Hopefully we can get that, you know, maybe by the end of this weekend. Just because it's a holiday weekend doesn't mean I will I will not be posting videos. I'm doing a live stream tomorrow with Philly Take With RB, Sunday with Philly Take With RB, and I'm joining the Battle Birds podcast with Philly Mike uh, Gate City Sports and Philly Fresh on Saturday night. And, you know, it's an honor to be on with those guys. But, you know, to get back into this video, we're going to be talking about one guy, and that guy could potentially be the reason why the Sixers either win the championship, make it far in the playoffs, or, you know, suck. And that guy is Matisse Thibel. Now, the reason why I say that the Sixers could suck is if he doesn't play. And that's not on him if he doesn't play. That's on Brett Brown. And it does worry me because Brett doesn't play younger players in the playoffs. He hasn't in the past. He didn't play Fultz. He didn't play, you know, guys like younger guys. He didn't play Furcon a couple years ago. Shake Milton didn't play. And that's understandable. You know, Shake Milton was a G League guy. But Fultz wasn't. And I understand his injury problems, but he still didn't play him. And, you know, the youth versus Brett Brown, I, I think it's a real thing. And it does bother me, especially going into the playoffs. You do need youth. Look at this team. Every player in the starting lineup is 26 and under outside of Al Horford. You know, that's not normal. Youth is what's taking over the NBA right now. And if you don't have it, you're not going to succeed for very long. And that's why I think Matisse Thibel is such an important player. You know, he's 22 years old. He's a little bit old for a rookie. But actually, he's 23 years old. So he's a little old for a rookie. If you don't already know, he was the 20th overall pick. The Celtics picked him, then traded him on draft night to the Sixers, obviously. You know, he's played 57 games, averaged 4.7 points, 1.5 rebounds, 1.2 assists. He's shooting 41% from the field, 35% from three. His free throw percentage is okay with 61%. But then you look at the defensive stats. 1.4 steals per game, 0.7 blocks per game. You know, his fouls are a little bit up there with 2.1. But with him being so young, and being a rookie, he's leading all rookies in steals, all rookie, uh, most rookies in blocks. The kid is a defensive animal. And, you know, it's, it's huge. It's huge when you look at it that way. Ben Simmons is a top three defender in the league. I don't care who argues with that. Ben Simmons, to me, is a top three defender in the league probably the best perimeter defender in the league outside of maybe Kawhi Leonard. But, you know, Ben and Matisse, when they are that backcourt duo, they are, they're unreal. They're unreal together on the defensive side. You know, you see Ben Simmons get a steal, a tip ball. Then you see Matisse Thibault do the same exact thing the very next possession. When these two guys are out on the floor together, they are absolutely amazing to watch on the defensive end. Offensive end, you know, Matisse started the season stronger. He got injured a little bit, and then he kind of, you know, fell off a little bit from three. But, you know, 
He plays 19 and a half minutes a game. I need Matisse Thybul to play 23 to 27 minutes a game in the playoffs. And the reason why is because of his defense. I don't need Matisse Thybul to score 10 points. That is a plus in my book. If Matisse Thybul can get you a 10 point, 15 point game, and we have seen it. He did go off one of those games. I, I forget who he played, but he was just knocking down shot after shot after shot. And, you know, I have the per 36 minute stats up right now. In 36 minutes of play, Matisse Thibel would be averaging 2.6 steals and 1.3 blocks per game this season with 8.7 points. So you got to think. If he can play more minutes, he's going to average more steals, he's going to average more blocks, and even he's going to either not only shoot more or, you know, be a contributor more, he's going to be able to score more. He's going to be able to facilitate more because, you know, he's not a bad passer if you really... Like, 2.3 assists from a shooting guard that really is only just a spot-up shooter that's more of a defensive player, it's not awful. And 8.7 points for a rookie, yes, I know he's a little bit older, but 8.7 uh, points for a rookie is not bad. It, it's not. Like, in Matisse Thibault's career, he's played with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. That's his rookie year. You know, you got Kobe White averaging a bunch of points. You got, you know, Ja and Zion averaging so many points. Who is going to stop them? Brandon Ingram? Jaron Jackson. I mean, these guys have the ball in their hands every time it's in the half-court set. Matisse Thibel either sits in the corner, sits at the top of the key, sits on, you know, the perimeter. He's very rarely shooting mid-range jump shots. He's very rarely driving into the basket, even though he can. I'm not saying that he can't do these things. I'm saying he really just sticks to the perimeter. And it, the same thing goes for defense. He sticks on the perimeter. He waits for the guy to get behind him a little bit. He either steals it or blocks it from him. I've seen it before. He's done it to Kemba Walker multiple times this season. Kemba Walker's an all-star starter. He's probably the best player on the Celtics. And we've done a very good job against him this season. Between Josh Richardson and Matisse Thibel, we have done a very good job of stopping Kemba Walker. And that's why the Sixers are 3-1 and one against the Boston Celtics this season. Matisse Thibel, though, to me, is the make or break for the Sixers. And again, it goes on defensive end. It goes on the defensive end of things. If the Sixers are holding teams to points and they're they're creating turnovers and they're just getting their hand on the ball and stealing it from them, blocking it, pre preventing the other team from scoring points. If we can hold the team under 200, under 100 points, there's no reason why the Sixers should ever lose. And the defensive end of this team, the length of this team, they can do that. I've seen it I've seen it happen before. Yeah, it was like the Knicks and the Nets, but they're the defensive end with the Sixers is unreal. We could arguably be the best defensive team in the league. We could be. I'm not saying that we are. We could be. And if Brett Brown doesn't play Matisse Thibel more than tw at least 15 minutes a game, there's a serious problem. There's no reason why Matisse Thibel shouldn't be the seventh man off the bench. I don't care that he's a rookie. He's too valuable in the defensive end to not play him. And that's my biggest concern. Is, is it's Will youth get in the way of Brett Brown's coaching and say, Matisse, let the veterans like Alec Burks and Glenn Robinson the third, let those guys go out there. You know, you'll have your chance in the future, but right now, I don't think you're the best option. If that happens, I don't think the Sixers get very far. I think the Sixers need Matisse Thibel's defensive ability to be able to win basketball games, especially in the playoffs when it's a very fast-moving game. You know, if it's fast-moving, Matisse Thibel can get his hand on the ball, create a fast break. I've seen him do it before. You know, it's it's not against the Knicks and the Nets and the Cavs. It's against teams like the Clippers. I've seen him steal the ball from LeBron, Kyrie, Kemba. 
Tatum. I've seen him do it against superstars. Paul George. If Matisse Thibel is not playing in this year's playoffs, the Sixers won't make it past the first round. I'm not saying we're going to win if Matisse does play, but I think we have a better shot of going further if Matisse is averaging 20 to 25 minutes a game than if he's not playing at all or playing under 10 minutes because there's no reason why he should be playing under 10 minutes. Now let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Do you think I'm a little bit crazy on Matisse saying if Matisse Thibel doesn't play, the Sixers are going to suck? Or do you agree with me? Do you think if Matisse Thibel does not play in the NBA playoffs, do you think the Sixers will crumble because of the defense, the lack of defense that Matisse you know, brings to the table every single game? Let me know in the comments section below. You know, thank you all again so much for watching for the support. We're almost at 580 subscribers. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe on the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'm out. Peace.